Hi guys, I'm back again with some more stories for you today. Let's go to the first one, which is a real drama one. So the story is about OP's husband and his brother's affair with his ex-wife, which resulted in a child who now demands a DNA test. Well, listen to the story to find out why, and of course, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. Okay, so I, 35 female, know how the title may make this seem, but trust me, my fiancé Ken, 45 male, was the wronged one here. Years ago, Ken caught his ex, Jessica, 45 female, with his brother Darren when he came home earlier than expected. I don't know all the details, but it obviously wasn't pretty, and Ken told everyone what had happened and filed for divorce. Jessica kept apologizing profusely in tears, stating that she was only doing this for a baby, as it was recently determined that Ken couldn't have children of his own. They fought a lot after the diagnosis because she wanted to experience pregnancy and get a donor, while Ken took a adopt-or-nothing stance. Jessica's plan was to get pregnant by Darren and have a miracle baby, knowing that Ken would have trusted her enough to never consider a DNA test. During the proceedings, it was discovered that Jessica was pregnant and Ken's parents got Darren to take responsibility. So my fiancé managed to escape being the legal father. A few weeks after the divorce, Jessica gave birth to her daughter, Emily, 21 female. And after a few years, Ken's parents tried for reconciliation for Emily's benefit, but Ken refused. Ken went low contact with his parents and made it very clear that whenever Darren and Jessica would go, he wouldn't be there and voluntarily just stopped going to most family functions. Ken hated his brother and didn't care when he died and resented his parents for missing Darren so much. But luckily, I was able to get him to attend therapy and work through his issues. Surprisingly, I got pregnant and readily offered to do a DNA test to soothe Ken's anxiety. And when my twins were proven to be his, he proposed. Ken's parents are over the moon about getting more grandchildren, but things have gotten a bit tense as Emily is now requesting contact and wants to do a DNA test. At the moment, Ken is refusing because A, Unless Darren wasn't his bio bro, nothing genetically will change for Emily. B. Ken feels like the farther away Jessica and Emily are from his life, the better for his mental health. C. Emily may only be after money. Ken's parents tried to convince him at first, but when he threatened no contact with the twins, they stopped. So now Emily and his parents are asking me to convince him. I politely refused and instead told Emily to just give Ken more time and that if it's ever proven that she is his daughter, that I will welcome her with open arms. They didn't like my response, and now Emily's family and friends are starting to harass me online. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Because someone asked, I'll clarify and add some information. 1. Yes, Darren is dead. He died in an accident and has been gone for a few years. 2. No, Ken has no regrets and didn't even go to the funeral. 3. No one thought to do a DNA test because Ken was told more than once that he couldn't have biological children. 5. After the test proved that the children were his, Ken got retested and it turns out he was misdiagnosed. He sued the doctor and settled out of court and not too long after that, Emily started to reach out which is why Ken thinks she's after money. OP's fiance's feelings and concerns are valid. What his ex and family, friend's ex, are doing by harassing OP is wrong. OP's fiancé doesn't want to reopen old wounds and confusion when he has found happiness. The best solution is giving time to OP's fiancé. Also, OP's fiancé didn't have any support from his own family when he needed them the most after being betrayed by his own brother and ex. OP should not betray him siding with his parents and Emily. Let's see the community's opinion on the situation. Jed it Together says, I'm going with not the a-hole, as Ken has already been asked and refused the DNA test. I'm surprised one wasn't conducted at the time, just in case. But honestly, Emily is an adult, and she's not entitled to any money from Ken. And she may just be trying to sort out who her biological father is, given that her mom was sleeping with two men who theoretically could have impregnated her. Assuming that she is somehow after his money is a weird leap, given you all don't know her. That said, you can't convince your husband to do a DNA test, and he's already been asked. It's a no. Sammy Hammy 24 says, not the a-hole. Ken was deeply betrayed in one of the worst ways I can think of. He's gone out of his way to avoid his brother, ex, and niece. While I feel a little bad for niece having these questions about her paternity, she is an adult now 
and had the benefit of growing up with two parents and loving grandparents, while Ken, the only actual victim here, was essentially told to suck it up. At this point, it really doesn't matter if he's her bio child, and he's made his decision. The answer is a resounding no. I hope he decides to go fully no contact with these people. They bring nothing but pain into his life. His own parents don't seem to have any concern for what he's been through, but still want to play loving grandparents to your twins. Latent says, They didn't like my response, and now Emily's family and friends are starting to harass me online. Harassing you is supposed to make you want to do as they ask? That would make all my sympathy run away really fast. Emily may be hoping to get something from Ken. She may also simply miss her father, and this is the closest thing to having him back. She may be wondering if someone else is actually her father, and she thinks if she proves it wasn't Ken or Darren, she might be able to convince her mother to tell her. I had extremely wealthy parents. However, they were also terrible people and disapproved of my boyfriend because he comes from a different race and religion. They treated him horribly whenever I brought him over, insulting his skin color, background, anything they could think of, until I couldn't take it any longer. We cut off contact with my parents and eloped to the other side of the country, where I gave birth to our son, Liam. Our new lives were very different compared to my privileged upbringing. Both of us worked hard, but Liam has a medical condition that costs a lot to manage, so we had to forego luxuries and holidays. Still, we showered him with love and attention, and ours was a happy household. Liam did ask about his maternal grandparents when he was around 10, but we explained to him that they were horrible people and he didn't press any further. Despite his medical condition, Liam excelled in his studies and got accepted to a very prestigious university last year. Unfortunately, we had very little savings, and the scholarship he received was not enough to cover the remaining fees. So he had to give up and settle for a cheaper university. It was his dream school, so he was extremely dejected and still is. Recently, Liam got curious and started digging into his family history. We did not stop him, as he is old enough to make his own decisions. He got in touch with my brother and sister's children and was amazed to find out they were living extravagant lifestyles. It turns out that before my parents passed away, they'd left large trust funds for all their grandchildren, except Liam. He was incensed to find out that us cutting off my parents had caused him to miss out on this life-altering amount of money and is now giving us the silent treatment. I maintain that cutting off my toxic parents was the right thing to do, but I'm also heartbroken that it has led to our son missing out on his dream. Am I the a-hole? In my opinion, OP did the right thing to cut her parents out of her and her family's life. OP's parents had every opportunity to write OP's son into their will, estate, if they wanted to do so. They chose to reject him, just like they rejected his father. Might be tough for him to hear that, but OP needs to explain to him how they were treating his father. Let's hear the community's opinion. Deleted user says, Not the a-hole from the sounds of it. They wouldn't have left him any money anyway because he wasn't pure of color. A life without that hatred in it is worth a thousand trust funds. Rainbow Fire says, Not the a-hole. I'm going to preface this with, Your son is completely valid in being upset, though it is misplaced. With how they treated your partner, I cannot imagine how they would have treated your son and how they may have hurt him. I think you absolutely did the right thing by walking out of that situation for all of you. You're both heartbroken that this didn't work out, but who even knows if he would have had a trust fund and if he had to endure years of watching his father be disrespected at a minimum. I have a big feeling that he would have been singled out as other due to their feelings about your partner. I think you did the best you could, OP. You just gotta let him work through the unfair feelings for a while. Someday I'll find this, says. Not the a-hole. I get that he's upset, but if your parents had their way, Liam wouldn't even exist. My husband, 40 male, is a doctor, and I, 29 female, don't work. I got married and had my kids, 6 female, 4 male, and 2 female, soon after graduating from college, so I've never had a real job. I was planning on working for a couple years and had a few job offers, but my daughter happened sooner than we'd planned, so I decided to just stay home. While it is quite nice that I can afford to stay home, money was definitely not the main reason why I married my husband. I love him because of his personality. My stepsister, 30 female, has three children, seven female, six male, and one male. I babysit them fairly often. A few days ago, my parents had a barbecue at their house. My fifth anniversary was a few weeks ago, and my husband got me a diamond eternity band and tennis bracelet. I was showing those to my mom when my stepfather and stepsister walked over. 
My dad asked my stepsister when she's getting a ring. She gave me a dirty look and said, not everybody can afford to waste thousands of dollars on a shiny rock. I tried to be the bigger person and told my stepdad that she doesn't need a ring and it's obvious that her boyfriend loves her a lot, whether she has one or not. She told me to duck off with my fake sympathy. I asked her if she woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, and she said, some people actually have things to worry about. A useless little gold digger who's never worked a day in her life wouldn't understand. I was quite offended, but I don't like confrontation, so I just smiled and told her to tell me if she needs help with anything. She said that she doesn't need my charity, and accused me of trying to make her and her family feel bad by flaunting my expensive jewelry. I reminded her that she chose to walk over and join our conversation. She said that it's hard to feel happy when she and her boyfriend still rent a house and can't afford special stuff for themselves and their kids while working long hours. I was done with her BS, so I basically told her that that's their problem and there's nothing I can do about that. She said that her kids feel awful when they see all the nice things my kids have, and her daughter really wanted to be a ballerina and do gymnastics, but she can't afford it, so she has to watch her cousin do everything she dreamed of doing. I told her to stop being a jealous bee and said that if she doesn't want her kids to be jealous, then I won't babysit them anymore. She called me insensitive and said that I've always been given everything I want and I'm spoiled. I didn't want to engage with her anymore, so I left to talk to my sister-in-law. My stepsister left the barbecue immediately after that and is still mad at me. My mom thinks I should apologize. Am I the a-hole? Well, there is no doubt OP's stepsister is very jealous of OP. Nobody would argue about that, I guess. OP's sister was very rude, and OP definitely has nothing to apologize about. OP was showing her mom her gift and sharing her joy, not bragging. And I agree with OP's decision not to babysit stepsister's kids anymore. She basically dug her own hole. Let's hear the community's opinion. Ryan's Games 13 says, Not the a-hole. First off, being a stay-at-home mom is one of the hardest jobs in the world, and you never get time off. So I got no idea why she said you'd never worked a day in your life, when realistically, you work the same, if not more than her. Not only that, but you defended her when your stepdad asked about her getting a ring by bringing up a completely valid point. Plus, she also can't get mad at your stepdad. Rings are usually commonplace in marriage. Not saying you need one, just that most people get one. So when you don't buy a ring, people would probably be curious about it. Plus, you came and defended her. It's not like you said, oh, stepfather, you know this peasant can't afford a ring. No, you brought up a completely valid point to your dad's question, and then her calling you a gold digger, and oh, I'm so poor, she sounds jealous as duck. Cursed818 says, not the a-hole. If your stepsister wants to throw around insults, she can't be surprised when you clap back especially when you defended her and you regularly babysit her children. You're perfectly within your rights to defend yourself, and it is you who is owed the apology. Tell your mother that you didn't start this fight and you're not going to apologize for finishing it, but you will accept her apology when she's ready to give it. Until then, it's best for you two to steer clear of each other, and don't babysit for her until she apologizes. Beige Tile says, Not the a-hole, obviously. Clearly your stepsister is going through some financial issues and is lashing out at you. You didn't do anything wrong, and she should be the one to apologize since she clearly started this confrontation and escalated it. She is 100% in the wrong. Also on a side note, obviously economically speaking, a lot of people are struggling right now. Inflation, stagnant wages, and so on. There could be people in your life struggling right now that you are not aware of. Most people keep that to themselves. I personally don't think you were flaunting your anniversary gift at all, but just some advice. It's good to be mindful of others, especially those who may be having a hard time financially. I live with my stepmom, let's call her Anna, who's five months pregnant right now. A lot of foods now make Anna nauseous, even though she used to like almost all of them before she got pregnant. Coffee, boba tea, chocolate, anything that has a lot of sugar or would be considered dessert, anything with cheese, Mexican or Thai food? The only meat Anna can eat right now is chicken because the smell of beef, pork, or fish makes her gag. We can't have any of the above stuff for family meals anymore, which I understand, and I feel bad for Anna since I know it makes her sick and she can't help it. What's frustrating to me, though, is that we aren't allowed to eat any of the stuff at all. We can't even have it in the house, and we'll get in trouble if we eat it somewhere else because according to my dad, it's unfair if someone's eating foods that Anna can't and it's only fair that we give up those foods with her. 
Anna was normally super nice and peaceful before she got pregnant, but now she's in a bad mood a lot. Like, she'll get mad if the grocery store was out of almond milk, or she'll get upset if someone wears a tank top because she thinks she doesn't look good in them anymore. My dad keeps saying that it's just her pregnancy hormones, she can't help it, and I can deal with it for just a few more months. I'm posting because my friend, let's call her May, invited me to go out for donuts with her since she just got her first job. I asked dad if I could go since it is a special occasion and Anna was out of town anyway, so she wouldn't even know. Dad said yes, but then yesterday, an hour before May was going to pick me up, he said he changed his mind and I couldn't go anymore because he didn't want Anna to find out about it and feel bad. I admit that I started screaming, which I know wasn't a great way to handle things. But I was just so fed up, because this isn't the first time he's forced me to cancel plans last minute like this. I told him I'm sick of it, and what's actually unfair is for everyone to be on a restricted diet 24-7, just because Anna can't have those foods. I'm guessing my dad was pretty shocked since I never lose my cool like that, so he ended up letting me go out with May. But when I got back home, he told me how immature I was. I'm 15 and know nothing about what Anna is going through right now, and that we're already halfway there, so I could have just soldiered through for four more months instead of getting so worked up about it. Things are still pretty tense between me and my dad right now, so I can't stop thinking about if he was right, and I'm the one being unreasonable right now. Am I the a-hole? It is not a manual 1984 says. Not the a-hole. This is completely unreasonable. I can get not having those specific foods in the house. Even that is extreme. But to deny food to you in solidarity? Come on. When the kid is born, will you be woken up at night in solidarity as well? Zen Ninja 92 says, Not the a-hole. This is absolutely unreasonable and so immature of them. They need to grow up and act like adults. Yes, it's hard for someone to be pregnant, but the whole household doesn't go into food or clothing lockdown to appease her. You are not the a-hole, and allowing this to continue will let her set more ridiculous rules to control you all. It's trash. Hockey Night in Canada 9 says, Not the a-hole. That is a completely unreasonable request, and you are being more than accommodating to your stepmom. She is the one that needs to grow up, and your dad should stop enabling her.